This morning for our first lesson, we're going to talk about a subject that is one of those things that we talk about sin and different kinds of sin and how we handle them in the world today. And our lesson today is going to talk about how do you handle envy and jealousy. And those two words are very similar in the way that they are presented as far as how we look at things. Our lesson text is taken from Mark chapter 15. Take your Bibles and follow, uh, follow along as we go through this particular lesson. In Mark chapter 15, the Bible speaks of there were Jesus. And you remember how they treated Jesus while he was here on this earth. There were times they saw the popularity of the crowds that were, were following Jesus and they thought, well, you know, he's taken away our popularity. He's taken away our place and our, our nation in some respects. They didn't want to yield to the Messiah when they came. But the problem was they were looking for the Messiah. They were expecting him. And that's really what they were anticipating. But when he came, they actually were envious of him and jealous of him. In Mark chapter 15, we'll begin with, begin with verse 6. Here the Bible says, Now at the feast he used to release for them any one prisoner whom they requested. This is what Pilate would do. The man named Barabbas had been imprisoned with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the insurrection. The crowd went up, began asking him to do as he had been accustomed to do for them. Pilate answered them saying, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he was aware that the chief priests had handed him over because of envy. But when the chief priests stirred up the crowd to ask him to release Barabbas for them instead. And so you see how that they, all this played out is that they chose an actual criminal over our Lord. And so again, all that was because of envy. They were, in some ways, Pilate, he could actually see through what they were doing. And I think it's obvious that it was something that was wrong. And he did this. He actually released Barabbas instead of Jesus because of they would not let him do that. Even though he wanted to do so. But I want you to think about this from this perspective. These are religious people who are doing this. It's not just the people of the world doing this because of envy. But these are people who claim to know God who are following him according to law of Moses, but yet are fallen into the trap of the devil with come with envy and jealousy. And that's really what I, I want to present this lesson from this perspective, that anyone is susceptible to this. And even preachers, even elders, song leaders, and just your average Christian also can be jealous of others and maybe even those in the world things that they have. And so that's why we have to study lessons like this, to remind us not to be this way. God expects us to be better than this and to do what's right rather than do the wrong thing when it comes to envy and jealousy. But first question I want to look at is, what is envy and jealousy? Well, the word envy, as Lunata tells us, to experience a feeling of ill will due to real or presumed advantage experienced by someone else. And I think that's a good definition. Uh, there's other definitions maybe go farther than that, that they want to do harm to that person and they want to take away that or want to have it for themselves. This, And I think that's the motivation, is that there's envy can lead to that. And I believe like other sins are gateway sins like anger, envy, and jealousy can lead us to do things we should not do. And people have done in the Old Testament and the New Testament. We've seen examples of that, how it led them to wrong ways. The word jealousy is a little bit different. You know, these words are, are somewhat similar in meaning, but there is a slight difference. Kind of like the word rebuke and reprove is somewhat different in some ways. Well, envy, especially in the Old Testament, is very similar to the word jealousy. But when you come to the New Testament, the Greek, and it bears out that it's more like the passion. It's more like the zeal. We get actually the same word for zeal from the word jealousy. And so in some ways that can be uh, somewhat confusing. But here we understand jealousy, though, we're talking about this morning is always wrong. It's not in a good sense. 
that it's an evil sense that jealousy causes us to behave in ways we should not. Genesis 30 verse 1, the New King James Bible says this, about what happened in Jacob's household. Now when Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, she became jealous of her sister. And she said to Jacob, give me children or else I die. Now if you notice in the New American Standard Bible, it's rendered that Rachel envied her sister. We say, why the difference in the words? Well, again, these two words are very similar, especially in the Hebrew words. So that's one of the differences. Actually, one of the similarities are very stronger in the Old Testament. And so both are correct in some ways. And that's where we'll have to leave it at that. But there's also a sense of godly jealousy. Now, some might even think about it in that way, the sense of a godly sense. And the Bible does... Uh, actually show this in some ways. In Romans chapter 11, verses 14 and 15, here Paul would say, If by any means I may provoke to jealousy those who are my flesh and, and save some of them. For if their being cast away is the re reconciling of the world, what will be the acceptance be but life from the dead? Now really what Paul is, is driving at here is the fact that the Gentiles could actually cause his Jewish brethren and his preaching, he's wanting them to see what well, they're coming to Christ and you need to do the same, to have life. It's in this sense, a jealousy in a good way. It's only, you know, I say positive sense that there could be a jealousy. And Second Corinthians chapter 11, he uses the same idea. He says, bear with me a little folly in verse 1. For I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. Now, this sense, God wants us exclusively. And I think that's for the exclusivity of the relationship, how, how God will not share us with the world. And here he says, I am jealous with you with, a God, with godly jealousy. For I have betrothed you to one husband that may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. In other words, they were going away from Christ, not being faithful in that regard. So he said, I'm being jealous. It's like a husband relationship kind of jealousy where he's not going to share in that way. Now, primarily, we're not going to talk about that particularly. And there's a lot that could be said about that, especially in the Old Testament. There's some things about that. But primarily this morning, I want to just talk about the similarities, the envy, jealousy in that way. But notice before we move on, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 5, again, we're seeing God picture himself as being a jealous God. It says, you shall not bow down to them and serve them. Talk about these idols, these false gods. This is when he's given the Ten Commandments, the Decalogue, if you will. So for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. Again, God is wanting us to serve Him and no one else. And so again, that comes back to the, the relationship being single in that regard. So, And we cannot not say share our affections and love with the world and things like that. So there's a sense of jealousy in a good sense. Let's focus this morning on how to avoid the bad part of jealousy and envy. I want to suggest what we're talking about this morning, as we mentioned several times, this, this idea of the, of the works of the flesh. And really, what's what Paul is talking about in Galatians chapter 5, 19 to 21. He includes both of these words. You may think, well, again, why does he use both? Well, whether you put the difference, uh, slight differences there, both are needed for us today. He talks about sins, and he lists them in with sins like idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. And so you see, that's the works of the flesh, things we're supposed to stay away from as we walk in the Spirit of God. And it's also signs of carnality and worldliness in our lives. When we begin to envy and we start to be jealous of others and, and we may even act out on that in some ways. In 1 Corinthians 3 verse 3, I believe Paul was talking to a group of people that were acting out of jealousy. He says, for you are still carnal. Where, for where there are, 
envy, strife, and divisions among you? Are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? Now, every time you hear things like envy, you see there's other words that go along with it. Strife and divisions. And that's really commonplace. These are, are connected sins, aren't they? They are one that once you begin with envy, then you can have the strife and the divisions because of envy. And so that's why it's so dangerous to go down that road, especially among churches, when there is competition. And we may like competition in sports, but that's where it needs to stay. It should never be among God's people that we have competition, that we're trying to outdo one another, trying to get more popularity and see who's the best just for the best sake. Because that is the wrong sense. That only leads to jealousy, envy, strifes, and divisions that the Bible does not want us to go down that road. And you say, well, what's the problem with all this? Just like all these other sins. The last part of the verse, verse 21, we didn't read. But here Paul would say that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's how serious it is. When you have envy, you have strife, you have jealousies, that's going to keep people from going to heaven. And that's one of the sad realities that we need to empty that. We need to lay that aside is what Peter would tell us in 1 Peter chapter 2. Lay aside all of that. So how envy and jealousy changes people and even affects others in bad ways, you might say. Well, first of all, it motivates many to work hard for material gain. We've got to keep up with the Joneses, in other words. Ecclesiastes 4, verse 4, the ESV version, which I actually I read several versions before I chose this one, says, Then I saw that all toil and all skill in work come, this is the motivation, from a man's envy of his neighbor. And that can be the case, that we're, we're just working hard, trying to keep up with everybody else. And what do you know what Solomon says about this? The last part of the verse tells us, this also is vanity and a striving after the wind. And so we see that's not helpful in any way. We're trying to keep up with other people and, and we're envious of what they have. We see they have something. You know, they go out and get the, 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 all the possessions of life and we see that. So I want that too. And we work hard just to get that. Then also it causes strife and rivalry as we mentioned. Paul in Philippians chapter 1, 15 to 18, he talks about that. Take your Bible and turn it over if you will. We've used this passage several times, but I want you to notice it again for this lesson. He says about some, to be sure, are preaching Christ even from envy and strife, but some also from goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition. And again, that's where it's, it's, it stems from. Envy, self-ambition, all that comes from the devil, if you will. And he says, the, out of selfish ambition rather than pure motives, thinking to cause me distress in my imprisonment. What then? Only in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in this I rejoice. And I believe and there's a sense Paul says, I'm not going to participate in this. I'm glad Christ is being preached, but that's not the way he needs to be preached. I think without saying that, he's saying that to us today, that some can have the wrong motives. They want to bring glory to themselves and are envious of others if they get glory. And really, that's no way for preachers or anyone else to be in that regard. In Acts chapter 13, verses 44 and 45, again, the Bible teaches us there the dangers when happens when people see things go on. and Like when Paul was trying to preach, you know, Paul had pure motives trying to preach the gospel, reach souls, trying to save people from a devil's hell. And here the Bible tells us, verse 44, that the next Sabbath nearly the whole city assembled to hear the word of God. Here he'd been preaching and they had crowds come and the Gentiles said, Let's, we want to hear this too. That's why he comes back the next day. And that the whole city is assembled to hear the word of, of the Lord. But when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and began contradicting the things spoken by Paul and were blaspheming. I guess that's the sad part about this is, this is interrupting the preaching of the gospel. The most important thing that really was in that city that day 
was not who gets the glory, who, who's drawing the crowds. But in the minds of those Jews, they could not let that go. And so, you know, God's will is being done here today. So they had to fight this. They had to cause strife and rivalry, really, because that's what the devil wanted. You know, think about it, when the devil is behind the scenes, he uses sin to try to disrupt God's will being done. That's exactly what we see there in Acts chapter 13 as well. And really what it blinds us to is our true spiritual needs. If you're still there, let's look at the next verse. Because, you know, one of the problem was is that they let envy and strife keep them from really being saved that day. Verse 46, the Bible says, Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first, since you repudiate it and judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life. Behold, we are turning to the Gentiles. And so you see, their greatest spiritual need was left out. Why? Because they were envious. They were jealous. They had let that control them to the point. They were blinded to their true spiritual needs. And that's exactly what we find also in 1 Timothy chapter 6 about the person that tries to come in and, and really hurt the church in some ways. He says, if anyone teaches otherwise, 1 Timothy 6 verse 3 says, and does not consent to wholesome words, even words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I have this on the, the chart here. And, and to the doctrine according with godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing. Notice that. Paul says this person is not really knowing what's really important. He knows nothing in that regard. But is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words which come, which come envy, strife, reviling, and evil suspicions. Think about that for a moment. There are people who are try to come in churches. They're troublemakers. I've seen this in several places that I have preached at. And, and people really don't realize themselves as being the troublemaker. But they are the one who's causing the, the disruption, the harmony, the unity of the church. And it's all because of envy and strife and things. They may not recognize the problem, but Paul labels the problem. We don't have to wonder what the problem is. Paul tells us they are thinking about themselves and how to make themselves look good. They're bringing in this different doctrine or this unwholesome words here. And so they're making the problem there. It's all because the devil has won the battle in this regard when people give themselves over to envy and strife. And this leads to ill will and the harm of others. That's really one of the dangerous parts. That's how it affects others more. We think, well, envy and strife is a sin within that person, and it truly is. But it's also, it has effects to other people. In Genesis chapter 37, verses 4 and 5, here the story of Joseph it says, and when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers. Now, why was that? Because he gave him this coat. Jacob gave him this coat of, of many colors. And that's something, you might question, why did he do that? And it caused his brothers to be envious of him. Well, they saw that he loved him more than all his brothers. They hated him and could not speak peacefully to him. Now, Joseph had a dream. He had told it to his brothers and they hated him even more. That's why in Acts chapter 7, verse 9, that the patriarchs, becoming envious, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. That's what Stephen said in his last sermon about bringing the history of the patriarchs and such. Even religious people, these were the children of Abraham. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob's descendants, they were the ones, his children were the ones who sold their brother into Egypt. So again, that's a problem. And it happens in families. It happens in all of places of life. The workplace. All kinds of places can happen in any place. But what it does show is a lack of love. When we are envious, there's not an, a love for that person. We're not happy for them that they got maybe some possessions or things. Or they, had, they got the promotion at work. And that we wanted that. And we feel, oh, I can't, I can't even speak to him because they, he got the promotion and I didn't get the promotion. Well, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4, Paul says that love is patient, love is kind, and is not jealous. And love is not, does not brag, and not arrogant. So we see, again, if we really love someone, we'll rejoice with them. 
And so, you know, we're glad that someone was able to have this advantage or, or some good thing in their life. To, and like the, the coat of many colors. You know, they, in, in some ways, it's, it's hard for us to think about it because we know how the story went. But they maybe say, well, we're rejoicing that he was received this. But you know what? The father should have gave all his sons that coat of many colors. One of the problems, though, today is, and I want to just use a picture to kind of illustrate this. When people are trying to climb the ladder of success, especially in the workplace, we're going to talk about the, the blessings of work in the last hour. Oftentimes, people are climbing the ladder of success. We just want to knock the ladder over. We want to harm someone, make them have a fall in some way. We want to knock them down. And that's not, again, showing love. That's the opposite of it, showing hatred and bitterness and envy, and all that because of we didn't get something, and they got this instead of us. And so that's how it affects other people, but it also can lead us away from God. That's one of the sad parts about this. In Psalm 73, verses 1 through 3, the first two verses, Asaph actually tells us this. Asaph wrote this psalm, said, Truly God is good to Israel, to such are a pure heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped. Now, he didn't let this destroy him, but it very well could have destroyed him. He says, For I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. How many times have we seen people who are out there in the world and we think, well, I wish I could do that. I wish I could get away with that, but you know, I can't do that because I serve God and I know better. That's kind of the way that Asaph presents this in this way. He says, I have washed my hands in innocency, all in vain. In other words, if you read 7 the 3rd Psalm, we did a lesson several years ago about that. That's something is a real problem, even for religious people. That's why in Psalm 70, or actually 37, verses 1 and 2, David would say this, Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. That's exactly what Asaph saw when he went to the sanctuary of God. He said, you set them on slippery places. You, they're they're going to have the rug pulled out from other words. How this is not something they can sustain and have your blessings. Especially in the day of judgment. Because we know wickedness is not going to save us in the last day. But I also want to say that, that envy and jealousy, that destroys us on the inside. Proverbs 14, verse 30, it says, A sound heart is, li is life to the body, but envy is rottenness to the bones. You know, inside the bones, the bones are inside your body. If you have that kind of problem that when it comes to that, that's a very serious problem. And something has to be fixed by someone who's able to do that. We know that one... Here's the one that can fix us with envy and strife is the great physician. Jesus can help us when we lay aside those kind of things. We need to also remember, how do you handle these sins? Let's remember where envy and jealousy come from. In Proverbs chapter 23, verse 17, notice what, again, the wise man tells us, do not let your heart envy sinners. You know, where does that come from? It comes from our heart. We can say within our hearts. We may not speak it out loud. We think, well, I wish I could wear an immodest dress. I wish I could go out and, and do the things other people do, drinking and, and cursing and do all kinds of things they do. You know, we realize that's not good for us, though. As we talk about it every Sunday, those things will not help us to inherit the kingdom of God. They'll actually keep us out of heaven. And that would actually be worse than anything, any temporal advantage we could ever have. But notice what he says in the last part of the verse. But be zealous for the fear of the Lord all the day. That reminds us who we serve and why we serve. We are, have that fear of the Lord and serve Him all the day. That's, that's reminding of the fact that the zeal there, and that could be a play on words there, the idea of jealousy, the, the zealousness there, is really what not be envious in that way, but also be zealous and, and have that strong passion for God in that way. In Galatians chapter 5, coming to the New Testament, Paul would say this in verse 25, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us 
not become conceited. Here is one of the problems is pride, isn't it? Conce being conceited and pride. And here's what the problem is. When we do that, we provoke one another. Provoking one another, envying one another. So if we're going to walk in the Spirit, we've got to put on all the vestiges of our carnality. In other words, the clothing of carnality. We've got to lay that aside in order to be pleasing to God. And also we have to guard our heart from these and even other sins. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, the NET version says this, Guard your heart with all vigilance, for from it are the sources of life. Every decision you make is because of what's your heart. You make decisions, your plan, your emotions, everything about that, who you are, comes from your heart, your thinking, if you will. And what you have to do every day is say, I'm going to have to guard my heart against, against being envious of other people here in the world today. And we need to keep our focus on the will of God and serving others. I want to go through three examples, if you will, and the lesson is yours. First one is Moses. In Numbers chapter 11, verses 26 to 30, I'm going to read these verses. It says, But two men had remained in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other, Medad. And the Spirit rested upon them, and they were among those listed, but who had not gone out to the tabernacle. Yet they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad are, are prophesying in the camp. So Joshua the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, one of his choice men, answered and said, Moses, my Lord, forbid them. Then Moses said to him, Are you zealous for my sake? Oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. And Moses returned to the camp he and the elders of Israel. I think we see there the opposite of envy in Moses. You know, the Bible tells us that he was the one of the meekest of all the men on the face of the earth at that time. And that we see some of the great tra tra uh, might say uh, attributes of Moses. And one of those was he was not jealous. If other people were prophesying and he wasn't the one always prophesying, he said, I wish everybody would prophesy. And so we see something good there in Moses in that way. The next is John the Baptist. Take your Bible to John chapter 1. Again, there's a man who's, who shows us we, cannot have to, we don't have to give in to jealousy and envy. And I think John the Baptist shows us that. In verse 15, the Bible says that John testified about him, talking about Christ, or the Messiah, and cried out saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me, has a higher rank than I, for he existed before me. And so again, we see Moses, uh, John the Baptist is saying, this is some way coming, I'm the forerunner, I'm not the great one. It's him you want to go to. And he wasn't jealous about that. In verse 27, dropping down a little bit, it says, it is he who comes after me, and the thong of those of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. In the last part, verses 35 to 37, Again, the next day, John was standing with two of his disciples and looked and said, at, at, looked at Jesus as he walked and said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. The Bible tells us when, even when he found out that Jesus was baptizing more disciples than John, he said, you know, that's, that's, not, that's not me to worry about that. He wasn't upset and worried about the fact that Jesus was increasing because he said he would increase. Therefore, how he handled that is, again, how we need to handle that. If someone outdoes me in whatever kind of thing I'm trying to do, I should not get jealous about that and, and give in to that kind of frustration. You know, they're, they're, they're getting a toehold. They're, they're actually doing better than I am. I've got to step it up. No, you know what we ought to do is simply say, you know, that's still God's will and let God's will be done. In Mark chapter 9, the last part of our lesson says this. Now John answered and said, Teacher, we saw someone who does not follow us casting out demons in your name. And we forbade him because he does not follow us. But Jesus said, Do not forbid him. For no one who works a miracle in my name can soon afterwards speak evil of me. For he who is not against us is on our side. So actually Jesus is commending this person. for now, The disciples may have forbid him, 
But Jesus is commanding. We need more people who are on our side. That's exactly how we need to look at that. If someone's doing a good job, we ought to congratulate them and pray that they're made their tribe increase is how we all look at that. And so how to handle envy and, stri- envy and jealousy? Don't participate in those sins. Do what the Bible says and serve Him faithfully. Thank you very much for your kind attention to the lesson now. We'll now prepare for our Bible studies.